Welcome to Lecture 23, Chapter 4, Cluster 2. We are nearing the end of our lecture notes. Okay, so... Rules of Exponents. Alright, we have kind of seen these a bit, but here they are. So these are the eight main rules of exponents. Okay, and the, one of the main things you really want to note for rules of exponents is the base. The other thing to note for rules of exponents is notice they will all have to do with only two of these symbols. Okay, so we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Two of these symbols will be what rules of exponents goes over, and two of them will not. Okay, so we'll figure that out at the end. We're going to go ahead and make sure that we discover which one of these rules of symbols, sorry, rules of exponents applies to. Okay, so here we go. First, if we have b to the m power times b to the n power, what we're going to get, it's called keep the base, add the exponents, m plus n. All right. The next one, a times b, and it's all raised to the m power, what will happen is this is called the distribution rule for exponents. Okay, so if you have this multiplication symbol, that's a big thing to note. This is not an addition, it's multiplication. If you have the multiplication, you can distribute the m. So I'll have a to the m times b to the n. Okay, please note this one right here. This is one that a lot of students will um, confuse with, and I'll write it over up here, a plus b to the m versus a times b to the n. These are two very different situations, okay? And the distribution only applies to this situation right here. It does not apply to that situation. So please be careful. That is something I've noticed a lot of students will run into trouble with. All right, the next rule. I called this the power rule. How I remember it is it kind of looks like he's got a little cape going on here. So what happens is b to the m power all raised to the n is going to be b m times n. Okay. So now we have the multiplication going on in the exponents. Then b to the 1 power. What is anything raised to the 1 power? It's just going to be itself. b. All right, now in the next ones, we have b to the m divided by b to the n. Okay, so notice we have the same bases here, b and b. So what we'll do is you keep the base, because it's the same, and then subtract the exponents. All right, for the next rule, we have a divided by b all raised to the n power. So what we're going to do is we have a to the n divided by b to the n, kind of similar to the rule above. And notice that this rule is also slightly similar to that rule above. All right, so b to the 0 power. Anything to the zero power, now this is one, another one that some students have trouble with, so just keep this in mind. b to the zero power is going to be one. All right, not zero, it's going to be one. Okay, anything to the zero power is one. Very good. All right, and lastly, one of my favorite rules. This one I like to call fish out of water. A friend of mine told me this one once. So here's a little story. If you are at the ocean, and you catch a fish, that fish is going to be out of the water. So it's a negative fish. It's an unhappy fish, right? How do you make a fish happy? Well, to make a fish happy, you're going to put it underwater, right? All right, so what happens is you take the reciprocal rule, b to the positive x. Now the fish is happy because it's underwater. All right, so that's all to explain that if you have anything to the negative power, what you do is you want to make it positive, so you'll take the reciprocal, 1 over b to the positive n. And just for fun, I call that fish out of water. That's not the real name. But there we go. We have the rules of exponents. All right, so the thing that you're going to note about all of these is that the beginning parts, all of the symbols that we have going on in the beginning, 
all have to do with multiplication or straight up exponents, okay? So it all has to do with multiplication or division, does not have to do with addition or subtraction. Okay, so keep that in mind. The rules of exponents show up with these operations. It's not that you can't have them in a problem that has addition, but they'll happen when you have some form of multiplication or subtraction. I mean, sorry, or division. All right, so first example, write out the following in simplified exponential notation. All right, so here we have x times x times x times x times x. How many x's do we have? One, two, three, four, five x's, right? So that's just going to be x how many times? Five times. So x to the fifth power. So that's for the first rule. Keep the base, add the exponents. So I kept the base of x and I went up and I added the 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that was from the first rule of exponent. The second one, b2, let's, let me write this out a little further. Let me actually change my pen. This is 2 times x to the fourth times 3. Alright, this looks an awful lot like the rule right there. So what we're going to do, because we have the multiplication going on, please note that's multiplication, we can go ahead and distribute the 3. When we do that, we get 2 to the third power times x to the fourth raised to the third power. Alright, well what's 2 to the third power? That's just going to be, let me write this in small notation, 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Alright, bring down the multiplication. Now, x to the fourth to the third power, that looks like the third rule we have right there. So what we're going to do is take the multiplication. So this is going to be x 4 times 3. That'll be 8x to the twelfth power. Alright, let's look at c. Oh, this one has a lot going on. Let me write this out a little more simplified. So we have 2 times a times 4 times a to the third squared. So one of the good rule of thumbs is to always work inside the parentheses if you can. When I look inside the parentheses, there's nothing to do. So now we can go and check on the outside of the parentheses. Well, we have that 2. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we did for b. Distribute the 2 in. How come we can do the distribution? because there's multiplication. Okay, remember, we cannot do it over addition. All right, let's go ahead and distribute that 2 in. So then we have 2 times a times 4 raised to the second power times a to the third power, also raised to the second power. We can simplify this to 2 times a times, well, 4 squared is 4 times 4, so that's 16, times and it's going to be a 3 times 2, because that was the power rule right there. Then we can go ahead and multiply the 2 and the 16, since they are like terms, and also multiply out the 3 times 2. So we have 32a, a to the 6. Now we might be tempted to say we're done, but notice, there are two base a's here. So we can go ahead and use the first rule to keep the base and add the exponents. So we'll get 32a to the, well, what's the exponent on this guy? Remember, if you don't see the exponent, it's going to be a 1. So that'll be 1 plus 6, a to the 7th. Okay. Let's keep going here. All right, D, x to the, ooh, see that special little thing there? Egg, it's x to the negative 3. Okay, whenever we have a negative exponent, please note this. We're not allowed to leave exponents as negatives. The only time we're ever allowed to do that is scientific notation. Any other time, if you ever see a negative exponent, you need to make it positive. So can you leave a negative exponent? Pretty much the answer is no unless it's scientific notation. So we need to make that a positive. We can go ahead and use the fish out of water rule. To make the fish happy, we're going to put it underwater. And now the fish is a positive 3. And there we go. 
voila. All right, so for E, let's see. We might be tempted to go ahead and use the fish out of water rule first, but what I like to do is first get rid of the parentheses and then apply that negative rule. Okay, because if not, it can be a little complicated. So let's go ahead and always work with the parentheses first. We can go ahead and use the distribution rule for exponents. And we get 2 to the negative 2 power times w to the fifth to the negative 2. So once again, um, it's a good idea to tackle the parentheses first. All right, so once we do that, let's simplify this out. We have 2 to the negative 2 times, oop, we have the power rule w5 times negative 2. That'll be 2 to the negative 2 times w to the negative 10. All right, we have two bases that each have a negative exponent. We need to use the fish out of water rule here. So that'll be 1 over 2 squared times 1 over w to the positive 10 using the fish out of water rule. Well, we know what 2 squared is. That's 4, so this is 1 over 4 times 1 over w to the 10. Then we can go ahead and multiply them together, and there are no other rules of exponents that we can apply here. So we are done. Alright, let's look at the next one. x to the 0 to the 3rd power. Hmm, there are a few ways you can do this, but as always, I like to look inside the parentheses to see if I can simplify anything. What is x to the 0 power? Well, anything to the 0 power is going to be 1. So that will be, let me rewrite this, x to the 0 power to the 3rd is going to equal 1 cubed. Because remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. And then, what is 1 cubed? Well, that's just going to be 1 times 1 times 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 is still 1. So our answer is All right, let's keep looking at some examples. Example to write out the following in simplified exponential form. Notation, excuse me. Okay, so let's see. w to the 6 over w to the third power. Well, that's that fractional rule, so what we know is we keep the base and we subtract the exponents. Now note, you always subtract the bottom one from the top. You never reverse it. The one on the bottom should always be the one being subtracted. So this is going to be w to the third power, and we are done. No other rules of exponents to apply. So for b, well, as usual, I look inside the parentheses to see if I can simplify anything, and it does not look like it. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 3 to all of the 3 terms. So that will be 2 to the third power times x to the third power all over n to the third power. And 2 to the third power, we found out earlier, was 8. So we have 8 times x cubed all over n cubed, which we are done. There are no multiples on the bases. There are no negative exponents, so we're good. And let's see, for c. Looking inside the parentheses, there's nothing to be done there. So all we can do is go ahead and distribute the 3 to the 2 right there. So that'll be m cubed all over 3 cubed. I'll go ahead and put the h in over 1. So then it'll be 18 times m cubed all over. And what is 3 cubed? Well, 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which is going to be 27. Can we simplify 18 and 27? Yeah, they're both divisible by 9. So we can go ahead and we will get 2m cubed all over 3 and we are done. Now d and e look like they're actually copies. Yep, accidentally copied those two down. So d and e we've already done. I'm going to go ahead and cross those out since we've already done those examples previously. Let's look at f, the last example for this section. 
Okay, so let's see. We don't have any parentheses going on, but we do have some division. And I also note that there are multiples of the bases. P shows up twice, and X also shows up twice. So I'm going to go ahead and use that division rule that we used for example A. Now let's go ahead and solve this. So that's going to equal, oops, wrong pen there, 2 times, and I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify that. That will be 2 over 1 times p to the 3 minus 8. Remember, we always subtract the bottom one from the top times. Okay. Keep the base. Actually, I don't need those ones since everything is going to be on the top. X five minus two. That'll be two p to the negative five times x to the third. Now, we might be tempted to say we're done, but please notice we have a negative exponent there. We're not allowed to leave negative exponents. So we're going to go ahead and do the fish out of water for that. And we'll get 2 over 1 times 1 over p to the positive fifth times x to the third over 1. And go ahead and multiply them all together. We get 2x cubed lower p to the 5 power. And we are done. All right, the last two examples for this one. So right at the following, it's implied exponential notation. All right, so the big change up for these problems versus the other ones is we have actually included addition for these. So we know none of the rules of exponents apply to addition or subtraction. So the only thing we can do with the rules of exponents is see if it works on any of these terms, which we know it does. Because 5 to the 0, or anything to the 0, is just going to be 1. Then bring down the plus. 5 to the 1. Well, anything to the 1 power is going to be itself. So 5 to the 1 power is 5. Bring down the addition. 5 to the negative 1. Well, that's the fish out of water rule. So I can just go ahead and do 1 over 5 to the 1 power. So that'll be 1 plus 5 plus 1 over, well... What's 5 to the 1? That's just 5. Alright, so this is going to be 1 plus 5 is 6. So 6 and 1 fifth is our answer. Okay, so this one was interesting because we had the addition going on. But remember, we can't actually use any rules of exponents on the addition. All we can do is use it on the terms in between. Alright, let's take a look at this one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and once again split this up looking at the additions or the subtractions. All right, so what do we have here? We have 2 to the 1 power. What is 2 to the 1? Well, anything to the 1 power is just itself, so that's just going to be 2. You can go ahead and pause the video and try to work this one out by yourself if you want. All right, so negative 2 to the 0 power. Well, anything to the 0 power is just going to be 1, so that will be 1 bring down this plus sign. Negative 2 to the second power. Oh, this is interesting. Let's write this one out. Negative 2 to the second power. What is this saying? Well, this is saying we want negative 2 twice. So negative 2 times negative 2. Well, negative times a negative is a positive. And then 2 times 2 is 4. So negative 2 raised to the second power is just going to be positive 4. Okay, bring down the negative sign. And then what is 2 squared? Well, 2 squared is just going to be 2 times 2, which would be 4. All right. Let's see. What do we have when we clean this all up? So that's 2 plus 1 plus 4 minus 4. Well, the plus 4 minus 4, those will cancel each other out. So we will be left with 2 plus 1, which is going to be 3. And there we go. We have our answer. And that is it for chapter 4, cluster 2.